So joining me now is Pilar Prince, a defense attorney specializing in family law. So I want to get your take on all of this, Pilar. Um, this truly troubling, sometimes graphic testimony coming from these victims, one after another, especially yesterday with victim number nine. How can the defense O overcome what they've heard, what the jury's heard. It's going to be extremely difficult, Kate, when you've got a case like this. What they're going to want to do is show, first of all, inconsistencies. That's a classic defense. For example, some of these uh, alleged victims said that they were in the home around a similar time, yet they testify that they were in the basement alone. They're also going to want to show consistencies. And the defense's argument is that their stories are almost so similar that the facts are too similar that they were perhaps coached or there's some collusion. And we've also heard hints that they're going to say because these victims are pursuing civil claims after this case that there might be motive of financial gain. But I'll tell you, the defense needs to be very careful not to attack these victims. It could turn around and really bite them if they do. So it seems almost like, um, I don't know if this is the appropriate term, that the defense just has to look for some sort of an escape hatch because the, the testimony from these victims, when our correspondents on the ground have been telling us what they've been saying, I mean, it's very graphic, very personal, very emotional stuff for any juror to hear. It's true, it's horrific, and you hear about crying in the courtroom. It's not, you know, it's not going well for them so far, but remember, they have a defense. The state has to, you know, it's the state's burden. I think what they need to do, too, is focus on Sandusky. We're hearing from the victims right now, and so that's very, it creates a very compassionate story, but remember, this is a man who was almost revered and treated not like an assistant coach, but much like a head coach himself. So he was loved for a long time. So the prosecution, well, they didn't technically rest. They, you know, it's, it's understood the defense will kind of move come Monday. So do you think, this is always the question when you talk about one of these big high-profile trials, do you think Sandusky must take the stand? Is there an advantage to that? I ask because it, is it also maybe too risky for him to take the stand when you look at that TV appearance, that TV, that television interview that he did with Bob Costas and, and how well that went off. Absolutely, he should not take the stand. Now, of course, it's, so. it's his choice. It's not the defense attorney. He can do it. But, you know, he may have been liked. He may be a charitable man. But one thing we've seen so far is he was not a convincing witness. I mean, I watched that interview with Bob Costas. He came off as strange, vague. The way he answered the questions, that he didn't just come right out. He was not, in my mind, emphatic about no. I think and it's very risky. What do you think are kind of about the timing of all of this? The prosecution, they, they kind of wrapped, they wrapped this week, it's kind of getting everybody in, which also leaves, they're not in session today, leaves the jury, I mean, you know, I always think about the jury because it, it's a jury of your peers, these people are just sitting there listening to this, they've now got three days to think of all this testimony before they hear from the defense. Is that part of a strategy? Absolutely, great strategy by the prosecution, and it worked out perfectly because the judge said we're going to just take the day and you know, have a long holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. But now these jurors have three days to sit and remember, these jurors were not sequestered, which I think is sort of amazing I, that this I judge thought that was surprising them. as well when yeah. that happened. Small town, rural Pennsylvania. I mean, to think that you can escape it. Now, of course, they're under these, you know, you can't Twitter, you can't Facebook, you can't watch the news, but right. the reality is they're going home and it's all around them and you can't escape the 24 media about it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, we will pick back up with it on Monday. Pillar Prince, thank you so much for your help today. Thank Have you. Have a great week. You too.